without further ado, Ms. Loretta. Okay, thank you so much, Nani. When you refer to me as Miss Loretta, I feel really old. <laughs> it's the same as, uh, you know, ma'am, kind of. And because I'm not from here, all these attributes, you know, in, in front of the name make me feel just different for some reason. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, thank you, first of all, for being here and, and for inviting me, Nani, for, to talk. I know we had this huge year gap <laughs> of non-communication. Then we meet at the same event a year later. And you tell them, well, you never get back to me. I'm like, well, I didn't see the email. <laughs> I, I usually do get back to people. Uh, so I'm really happy to be here because I've never probably had a chance to talk about my career to somebody who is studying to be a business person or an, or an aspiring entrepreneur or somebody in, in that uh, regard. So um, it's, it's going to be interesting. You're my test rabbits to see how I do. And I'm recording myself, then I'm going to uh, critique myself. And once I'm ready for TED Talk, that's when I will go there. So <laughs> um, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Loretta Terazaita. If you ever try to pronounce my name, my last name, without hearing it first, you would probably stop at R. <laughs> that's where most people stop. Uh, in Lithuanian, my name sound, would sound like this, Loretta Terazaita. So it has a rolling R. I was born and raised in Lithuania, I lived there most of my life until I moved here in 2003. And uh, back in Lithuania, I was a news anchor, news reporter, like Nani mentioned. I studied journalism, broadcasting journalism specifically. And in 2003, when we moved here, I uh, had nothing to do in the beginning. So I took some MBA classes to learn about business like you are learning right now. And then in 2010, I started my own business, and about five years ago, I joined a big company, Sandisk, which was then acquired by Western Digital. So that's a brief sort of history of mine. Um, let me ask you this, guys. Uh, how far in my life do you want me to go? Start all the way in Lithuania in my career, or do I start in 2003 when I moved here and what happened with me here? I need some input. I think we'd like to hear a little bit about the Lithuania as well, just because okay. That makes total sense. And uh, another question, and it's not only to Nani. I would like to hear from somebody else as well. Uh, what would you like to get out of this conversation today? Or this, what would you like to learn today? That means I prepared the, light, the right content. <laughs> I was actually touching on each of your points that you just made. So if I forget in, the, in, the, in all this you know, uh, conversation, feel free to raise your hand or remind me. OK, so let's go back all the way to Lithuania. Um, one thing that I remember clearly growing up when I was in my probably 11, maybe 12 years old, uh, my parents would watch nightly news, and I would be sitting in front of the TV, and I kept telling my parents, this is where I will be one day. They would laugh it off, uh, but they would never tell me that this is not a possibility, right? They would be, well, I was just child talking, but I knew that I want to be there. I did not know then how I will get there, but I planted that seed in my mind and uh, just forgot about it, I guess. But I'm a firm believer that whatever you plant in your mind, even if you don't pursue it or you don't think that you're pursuing, the mind works for you in the back end. And, and even without you knowing that you're doing things to get there, you're doing things to get there, right? So that's how I got into journalism. I thought, well, you know, if I ever wanted to be in TV, where do I go? I am a good communicator, or so I think. And uh, I, I've, I'm always curious and I always ask questions. And uh, um, I thought this would probably be the path where I should go. I did consider actually uh, um, global business direction as well. Or it was politics with business, something, something in that realm. Uh, but I chose journalism as a, as, a, as a path. And as in business, you know, we have uh, different paths that you can take. Accounting, finance, HR, right? Uh, project management, any, anything that you want to do, you, you, can, you can choose your major. So in journalism, right, you, you have newspaper, you have written, I should say, probably, written type of uh, format, and then you have uh, radio and you have TV. I knew at school I was not good at writing. Writing and filling in the paper with descriptive words was not how my brain worked. So I learned that early on, and I even, I remember that in 12th grade, my um, Lithuanian literature and language and literature teacher said, you will never get into journalism. Guess what that did to me? I'm like, I'm going to get into journalism. Her whole, her whole thought why I wouldn't get into journalism was that I was not a good writer. That's how she was basing 
the idea of what journalism was, right? So of course, that made me even more motivated. I will get into journalism, and I will prove you wrong, which I did in the end. Uh, so that sort of kick in the butt makes you do things, makes you want to accomplish things that somebody says you can't. Um, so when I was doing internships, and in different years had different types of internships. So first year was newspaper, hated it. Second year was radio, felt better, but I felt like I was talking to the microphone, to myself, nothing around, nobody around. So it was somewhat better than writing, but still not there. And then the third year was broadcasting TV. And that's where I loved, especially the news department, because news requires uh, really concise delivery of information. So no jibber jabber, you know, just focus and extract, gather all the information that's coming to you from all the different resources, uh, edit it out and present it to the audience so that it doesn't lose the content or context, and it's accurate at the same time. So that taught, taught me a lot of um, thinking quickly on my feet and uh, making uh, quick judgments by seeing a lot of things coming into, in, on your desk and trying to find the patterns and things and edit that out. And then at the same time, you know, be able, let's say if you have a, a, a politician or somebody in, in studio to interview, be able to actually continue the conversation beyond that report that you just did, uh, which may be as well a good listener. Because how else can you ask a question if you don't listen what the answer is? It's not necessarily the prepared answers that you have to go in. You have to also know, uh, hear what the answer could be, and elaborate on some interesting topic that you might have not thought about uh, to cover in that conversation. Um, why is this relevant to you? I don't know. Journalism is not what, you, what you're learning. But from the perspective of how to get focused, is I think you have to know yourself really well, right? What it is that interests you the most that would come very naturally to you with least effort possible. Like asking questions for me comes naturally. Talking to people to me, uh, for me comes naturally. Uh, being curious comes naturally to me. So that sort of mindset has made me pretty successful in what I did as a news anchor. So I had my career in television for about five years total. And uh, in 2003, I moved to the United States. I moved because my husband, who's also Lithuanian, got a job offer here, and I followed as a wife. So he was the one getting the visa, the working visa, and I follow as a wife with non-working visa. So imagine coming from this very busy, adrenaline-filled environment to nothing, nobody, <laughs> and you have to make your way. Uh, first of all, I could not work. Just legally, I could not work. So what do I do? I discovered Netflix, <laughs> actually. So I was Netflixing. I came into routine. I'm like, OK, if I ship this DVD on Saturday, it should come on Tuesday. Then I watch it quickly, this one, by Wednesday, ship it out. The next one comes in on Friday. I had the whole routine how to entertain myself through Netflix until the streaming service came on right later on. But that was my entertainment. And I remember hating being here because of who I am. Right? I, for me, not talking to people was a disaster. And I could not talk to anybody because I didn't know anybody. Right? Uh, uh, then slowly, you know, through different uh, Lithuanian communities, we, we, uh, we got acquainted with some people um, in the community that expanded then into, into the local um, acquaintances. But it was not the same. You still feel like you don't belong here. And uh, um, that was quite a challenge. Uh, what, what it taught me was to be patient and to not lose track of who you are. Because it's very easy when you're in this environment alone to, to, get, um, to lose the confidence in yourself. Because then you, you, if you don't realize what you're good at, outside of your home, meaning re by realize I mean that you, don't, that you don't feel like you're adding value to the community, right, by what you're good at, then uh, it, feels, it feels really lonely and it feels uh, uh, that the, your life is done. That's it. However, what I ended up doing, I ended up studying MBA just to entertain my brain, to, to not feel like I'm really doing nothing. In between, we had children, and I was pregnant and raising children and studying MBA. It was very hard, but I'm glad I did it. 
Um, and I learned certain things and skills in, uh, while doing that, which, which was good. Come 2009, that was probably about three years since we got our green card. The economy was pew. Everything was down. Nobody was hiring. Everybody was just firing. And I thought, well, there's no chance for me to ever go back into, into work. Now I have a green card, but I still cannot work because nobody is really hiring. And I thought, you know what? I'm done sitting at home with my children. I'm done talking to, uh, to moms only and only about children and their feeding schedule and diapers. I need something that's more than that in my life. And I remember I was cleaning the floor one evening, not evening, one afternoon while my kids were napping. And uh, I was thinking, where can I meet business people? Where can I meet business people? And you know, and mind you that, I, I was not really exposed to any business environment than myself to, to the amount that I am right now. So I really did not even know where to start to look for things. Uh, so I remember cleaning the floor. The TV is in the background. It's always in the background. And, uh, and I'm thinking, where can I meet business people? Like, where do I even go? What do I do? And uh, funny enough, the ad of San Jose Chamber of Commerce comes on. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I should volunteer there. Where can I meet business people then in Chamber of Commerce, right? Because this is all about business people, small communities. So I thought, OK, I'm going to find who I reach out to there, and I'm going to email that person and ask to be able to volunteer. So that's what I did. I reached out, very excited that I got the answer <laughs> that, oh, yes, we can use your services. You know, come here, come meet with us. You know, let's see what we can do. And I didn't have a clear idea of what I wanted to do. Neither that person that I reached out to had a clear idea of what he could give it what he could get to me, right? So it was more like, okay, let's meet and see what happens. So I meet, I get the task, the first task. Uh, he gives me this San Jose, you know, map and zip codes, and he asks me to match whatever those, those zip codes where businesses are to the map. It was something weird, but very easy. And I thought, okay, I'll do it. And I do it the next day. I send it back to him. He's like, oh, already? Well, I don't have anything else for you. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I want something. Just give me something, just anything. And that person says, you know what? Why don't you come with me, you know, to networking meetings? And uh, each, the way San Jose Chamber of, of Commerce works, like each region, Almaden, and I live in Almaden, for example, has an Almaden uh, business group or something like that. So they meet, uh, they meet every week to exchange referrals, to just talk, exchange business ideas. And I thought, great, you know, I, this, is, this is one of my goals, to just meet people, as many as I can, and co converse with them. So that's what I did. Uh, we started going to these networking meetings. I started telling people who I am, what my background was. And they're like, well, why don't you do videos? I'm like, what do you mean, why don't I do videos? What does that mean? YouTube back then was just up and coming. Uh, it was 2009, 2010, right? So uh, the business videos on YouTube were just kind of appearing slowly. And uh, I thought, well, you know what? Well, let me give it a try. People are telling this, this to me. I better listen, because they probably see what I'm not seeing myself. And uh, I thought, and people were saying, well, why don't you just take a phone? I said, no, 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 no. If I do, it needs to be right. Because if my name is behind it, it's not going to be on the phone. It's going to be the right way. This is that camera that I got. That was my first business camera that I invested into. And uh, I thought, OK, let's see what I can make it happen. So what I started, I started just filming different events, the, the, that particular group's uh, meetings, interviewing people, talking to them on camera, putting these little videos together. And I was thinking, this is what I should be doing. Not necessarily running the camera. I hated that part because too much logistics is going on when my brain is thinking content. Uh, and I thought, that's where that journalism can be converted. It's actually telling these business stories and uh, asking people questions, which, like I said, to me, it comes naturally. I don't have to overthink things. As long as I know what the topic is, I can totally pull the information out. That's how it snowballed. You know, one after another, I had to do a lot of free work, of course, to build that portfolio to understand myself as well, what in this whole process I love, what I don't like, and uh, figured that definitely I don't like running the camera, but I love the editing because if I know what the story is, is, is going to be, if I'm the one asking the question, I can see what the final video can be because I ask the question, I hear the answer, and I can edit it already in the story as I go. So it's easy for me to just then take that content and know exactly what those answers are and just put a quick draft together, let it sit, and then come back to it afterwards. Um, so like I said, there was a lot of hard labor that went into it uh, where I had to do a lot of free work. 
a lot of uh, discounted work until I realized what my value actually is and what people would be paying me for, right? Which is that understanding of the message, understanding of the story, how to tell it, extracting the information, and even advising people what to do with that content that they get, right? Again, back then, content marketing was not even in the picture. You know, Facebook was not even in the picture. People would just get the video and put it on YouTube and, and be like, okay, well, how do I get the views? What do I do with it? There was no sort of ma marketing me mechanism behind it. Uh, and when I said earlier that you have to find the skill that you're good at and grow upon it, that's what I started doing. Once I, once I realized what I can do, I started learning more about marketing, about digital marketing, educating myself and building upon that main skill that when people talk to me, I can immediately see a content plan for them and develop it for them uh, right away because they don't think the way I would be thinking, right? They think I just need a video, it needs to be viral. That was the, the key. Uh, they don't think that exactly the video that you do, you have to market it, you have to know your audience, you have to know the avenues where you want to push that video, right? Um, so that's how I started my business. And uh, the year in 2012, I believe, so two years into having my business, I thought, okay, I'm done just hustling and doing everything on my own. I need to grow the team. I need to find somebody who can knock on doors and do the dirty work, which is sales, which I do not like, and start generating more quality clients who can actually pay slightly more so that my business makes sense, right? So that year, end of the year, I'm all motivated to make the plan for 2013, have it all mapped out, and this is the strategy I'm going to go for. And I have a phone call, with, not a phone call, but a Skype call with my mom in January of 2013, right after the New Year's. And she kind of says, well, Loretta, have you ever thought about going and working for a company? I said, no, why would I? I have my own schedule. I can do whatever I want. I can arrange my time the way I want. But she planted a seed. And you know what happens with seeds. Once it's planted, it can materialize. Uh, and actually, the, the part that I, I probably have missed to, to note, which is very serendipitous, is that in the meantime, while I was doing my business and hustling for those two years, you know, I came across different corporations and different companies who, say, who would say, hey, we have a video team in-house. I'm like, oh, that would be awesome to be somewhere in-house. You, know? you get paid, you do the job, and you love what you do, and you learn the corporate environment at the same time. So when my mom asked that question, the seed has already been there. She reminded me of the seed, and I thought, you know what, I'll just go on LinkedIn. I'll, it's probably nothing is going to be there, but I'll calm her and tell her nothing is there. And, you know, I'll move on. And, of course, that didn't happen. So what happens was I hang up, and I thought, okay, let me just type in internal video producer. Let's see what comes up. Sandus comes, comes on top. I read through the whole description of the job, and my jaw just drops because it was exactly the resume that I had written probably half a year ago, thinking that maybe at some point I will be internal producer. Uh, and the funny part is that when I was interviewing, actually, the HR person said, did you rewrite the resume to fit that job description? I said it was vice versa. You had the description that met my resume. It was just bizarre. Uh, but how I got into the company was another story that I think uh, each of you should probably keep in mind that networking is key. People that you meet in your life are key. They're either going to help you or they're going to disappear. At some point in life, you probably either pass or cross. And, uh, especially if you help them in any part of your life, it will come back to you with rewards. And that's what happened with me. I was helping this nonprofit organization, uh, the person specifically who was running that uh, nonprofit, in doing, again, volunteer work, work and recording videos, editing videos. Uh, and the next thing I did when I found this job description on LinkedIn, I searched up who in my network might be able to introduce me. And that person, who I was helping, he actually knew the senior recruiter in the company who was hiring for this role. I call him up, I say, Hamid, this is the job description. You know this person. How can I get in front of that person? And uh, Hamid was like, well, you know, I have this video res I mean, resume, you know, coaching, whatever, you know, event that's happening probably two days since I called him. And he's going to be there representing Sandisk. He says, why don't you come in with your camera, interview, blah, 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 and then I will introduce. I'm like, I'm in. That's it. I'm going to show up no matter what comes out of this content. I'm showing up. So I do the thing with the camera. 
interview some people, and then at the end of this whole thing, you know, uh, Hamid walks me up to this recruiter and uh, says, this is Loretta. She's the one who was recording all the videos, and she found a job, you know, uh, at Sanders that she's interested in, you know. You guys should talk. And of course, I've never interviewed for an inter I've never done official interviews, especially in America, especially in the corporate world. So I didn't come in prepared. I didn't know I had to bring a resume. This never occurred to me. I thought, well, just email. But apparently, you have to bring in so that people don't forget you. It's kind of in front of them, right? I thought, I'm not going to get in. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. I'm just going to be forgotten right away. They probably already have people in, uh, in the queue. So I talked to this person, and he says, well, yeah, we have somebody, but it's not 100% set. I said, OK, well, I'm interested. So that you know, I'm interested. Just let me know if there's any opportunity. You know, here's my card. And I went on. I moved on. I thought, it's not going to happen. I just, did not, I just did not believe it, just because I know that I, I knew at that point that no matter how I think I could, I, 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 how, not, no matter how I think good I am, that person does not know me, right? That first impression could either break it or make it. So I was trying to make the impression, but I could not read him well enough to kind of gauge if this is going, hap going to happen or not. Uh, so the next day, I remember painting the walls in my house. And uh, I hear the phone call. I'm like, well, I'm not going to get out of the ladder and go all the way to get the phone. I'm not going to do that. Let me just finish this wall painting, and I'll get the message, and I'll listen to it. And that was the recruiter. I was super psyched. The first thought that came to my mind, oh, no, what if I get a job? What do I do with my business? I felt like I was betraying my business now. Everybody does the reverse, right? They go from corporate to doing the business. I'm doing the reverse. But I knew one thing. I knew that there were certain experiences and certain learning curves that I wanted to learn that putting my business on the side was worth it. And it was. Uh, so I'll go through the whole process, which was an adventure in itself. I'm not going to go dive into it unless you're interested. Uh, but I can answer all those questions later if you want. And uh, I get the job, right? So I'm now in this corporate environment trying to figure out how it works. Instead of providing services, now I'm taking in the services. Now I'm working with vendors. I'm trying to negotiate the budget. In reality, I realized that you really have to put your foot forward in order to be noticed, in order to be um, acknowledged. And you have to be innovative in what you say, how you propose ideas. And having that entrepreneurial background actually came, for me, came in as an advantage just because I was not afraid of being kicked out. I'm like, what, what, what worse can, can happen, right? I can just go back and do my business. So I'm just going to propose, push for it. They accept it. They don't accept it. You know, we'll see. Let's, let's break those walls. Let's, break, uh, let's open the doors to something more different than what they're used to doing. The first thing I notice when I go, uh, when I start working, is they have these monitors on TV, like internal monitors for streaming internal information. And it's all PowerPoint based. And I'm like, they call it SanDisk TV. And I said, well, which part of it is TV? It's PowerPoint. I said, why is there no video, right? Well, I come from TV background. For me, TV is TV. You have to show moving things. You don't just show a slide deck. Uh, and uh, I said, you know what? Let me see what's happening here. There were a lot of volunteer activities on campus that were happening where uh, employees would you know, build bikes or package you know, um, uh, backpacks for you know, school, school children, right? Like a lot of volunteer activities. And I thought, why don't I just go and start filming these, you know, interview people, talk to people, and start putting these on, on TV. And that's what I started doing, because nobody really knew exactly <laughs> what the role that they were hiring for is supposed to be. So that was a good opportunity for me to sort of build that role out and position myself where I wanted to be positioned within that company. So as people started noticing moving images instead of static, they started asking around, who's making these videos? Who, 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 how, how is all of a sudden this is changing? And what had happened, funnily, was that instead of doing all the legwork from start to finish, you know, conceptualizing, capturing, editing, over a period of time, I had so many internal clients that needed video for their marketing campaigns, for their social, for their whatever needs, training, you know, that eventually ended up managing the vendors and managing the projects versus doing everything from start to finish, which was perfect for me. This is the growth I wanted, right? This is the growth where uh, 
I could not have gotten easily or quickly while doing my business. I got, I got other you know, skills while doing my business, but not the managerial sort of role, right? Where that's possible only when you work in a bigger environment and a bigger team. Uh, one thing that I, I, one advice maybe that I can also give is that where, wherever you go, whatever you decide to do in your career, you should not be afraid of doing everything from scratch. Like no, for example, for me, I had to learn the lighting, I had to learn the camera specifications, I had to learn lenses, I had to learn all of that stuff that for me was not important when I was in television, right? Because there were other people, there were cameramen, there were lighting people, all I had to focus was content. So I had to learn all of these things uh, in order to be able then to run my business to some extent myself on my own, right? That's how my role start, started from sort of doing everything, kind of doing what I was doing in my business, starting like that at SanDisk and uh, uh, growing into the role that I molded myself, just naturally sort of shifting it, right? And again, it's not like anywhere you will go, it will happen. The environment was uh, uh, favorable for, for me to be able to get to that path uh, and uh, learn all the things that I wanted to learn. Now, SanDisk was acquired by Western Digital in 2000. The announcement came out in 2015. For about a year, nothing was happening. Everybody was waiting. All the projects were installed. Uh, teams are sort of anxious, not sure what's going to happen. I was already being restless in my role as well. I started going to all the events that were related to VR, AR, because that was a new technology. That was something that I thought a natural sort of direction, extension maybe I should say, from what I am doing right now into where things could mold when it comes to storytelling content creation, experience creation, and all of that. So I started going to a ton of different meetups. The exposure, the people that you meet is invaluable because you can learn from the founders, you can learn from people who are attending meetings, uh, engineers, VCs, whoever. For me, it was a platform to, again, just be around people, find those other avenues of exploration of content creation or uh, um, experience creation and just learn that new technology. What is it that it's going to do when it comes to storytelling? Not necessarily technology itself. Uh, uh, you know, I was not interested in technology or engineering side of things or coding side of things. It was more what can it do you know, when it comes to uh, brand experiences. That's sort of like my whole journey that I, was, that, that I, that I could tell you in a condensed format. Uh, did I hit the time? Yeah, I did. That is awesome. So feel free to ask any questions. I hope you gain some sort of insights from my experience and could apply something to yourselves on how to approach things, what to do, what to, uh, what to think about yourselves. And uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions if you have any.